Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be learning about two things, Henri Matisse and about cylinders. And we're going to be using his example of this goldfish painting that he did in the style that he helped invent called Fauvism. And Fauvism is an art movement that uses bright, bold colors and and bright, uh, deliberate brush strokes. You can see his where the artist actually just put the paint on the canvas and didn't blend it in. And do did he, they also did simplified abstract shapes. And this painting is go uh, is called Goldfish, and it's in the Prushkin Museum in Russia. And here's another goldfish painting. And you can see actually on this one, this first one, his cylinder shapes. And that's the shape we're gonna learn about today in art class. And here's another goldfish painting here. Um, and this is in the Art Institute in Chicago. It's not of a cylinder shape, but it's almost of a sphere shape here, this rounded sphere. But it's on the same idea as the lesson that we're gonna be doing. Um, on cylinders. And this is called Woman Before an Aquarium. And you can see how the artist used bright, beautiful, bold colors. Even the girl is actually all in shades of pinks. And then we've got a lot of turquoise, bright turquoise in the background here as well. But let's talk about cylinders first before we begin our paint, our, our sketch of this. Um, a cylinder has the same circular shape at the top as it does at the bottom. And then its sides are equal distance all around, just like this wooden block here that you see. If you were to take this cylinder form and measure the shape of this, and you were to cut it open, and lay it out flat, it would actually form a rectangle. So let's look at this paper tube here. The sides of this are equal distance from top to bottom. And I'll show you here, I have one cut open. So if I were to lay a cylinder flat and open it up, you see how it forms a rectangle? So the top and the bottom of our cylinder is parallel. These two lines, go across the page and they would never meet on a cylinder. They are parallel. So that's good to know when we draw the cylinder. So look, this line and this line, they will be parallel and at some point. And then the sides here, these two sides are also parallel. This and this, equal distance apart. So here's another example here of a cylinder. Okay, you can see how it has a surface. And then if you were to uh, measure from its center point, this is all equal distance on a cylinder. Here's another example here. And this is a very flat cylinder. You see, so cylinders can come in all sizes and shapes. The top area, from its center point is equal distance all around. That's what makes it a cylinder. And then the sides from the top to the bottom all around are equal distance, equal distances. Um, is this, would this be an example of a cylinder? And I have today with me third graders and they're gonna learn about, they know a lot about cylinders, but when I ask them to draw cylinders, their cylinders could use a little improvement. So we are going to learn how to draw cylinders the easy way. But is this third graders? Is this a cylinder? No. No. Good. What about this? Would this be an example of a cylinder? Well, it's round. It's rounded and does have a top. But look at the bottom. It's not the same shape. And it's not the same di diameter at the bottom as the top. It's very different, so that's not a cylinder either. And what about that? No. No, so those are not cylinders. Things that have 
the same size circle, top and bottom, and then equal distance around the sides. That's a, that could be a cylinder. What about a cup? Yeah, that could be a cylinder. And what about, they use this a lot in examples of cylinders. I don't have one here with me. What about a soup can? Yes. yes, a soup can is definitely a cylinder, and that's what they use a lot. Ooh, how about this? Yes. This is something I love to use, glitter. And yeah, my glitter can is a cylinder. It's got the same distance as from the top and bottom, and then equal distance on the side. So that is definitely a cylinder. The, the cylinder shape that we're going to be making today is going to be, it's going to have the same diameter, but it's going to be hollow at the top right here. And so it's going to be similar to this can. It's going to be the goldfish bowl for our goldfish. So let's begin making our cylinder. And an easy way to do it is to take your hand and put your hand right in the middle of your page. And then what I do is I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna do a, um, a straight line, just, that's so we have it centered here, so we're eyeballing it. I'm gonna do a straight line right down along the edge of my hand. Now look, mine isn't exactly straight. If it's not exactly straight, it's okay. If we actually were to look at Henri Matisse's, this is not perfectly straight either. When you're doing it freehand, it's you're not gonna get it straight. And that's the beauty of your art. So don't worry about it if you make a mistake. Now, on the other side, what we're gonna do is, well, actually from here, we're gonna start making the letter C. So watch, we're gonna make the top curve now. So we have our guideline here. Now we're gonna add the top lip of this. Now, when we view a cylinder from the fr actual front view, it just looks pretty much like a rectangle. But if I turn it in perspective a little way like this, I get to see some of the surface of that. Now, what shape do you see right here? What does that appear to be? What shape is that? The, the top. Yes. Okay, we know it is a circle because we know our facts about cylinders. It's a circular. But what does it appear to be? Yes. Yes, it appears to look like an oval and that's because of the perspective. We're seeing it at a different angle. So it's kind of fooling the eye. So we're gonna draw what we see because when we learn to draw, everybody tells us, look at your, use your eyes. Draw what you see. That's what the Fauves were doing. They were drawing these bright, bright colors. If they see yellow, draw yellow, use yellow. If you see something that's blue, use that pure color. They wanted pure color coming out of that tube, like ultramarine blue, instead of mixing it in, with lighter colors. So yeah, if we see something, draw what you see. So we see this oval. Now watch how we can do this. If we draw kind of a letter C shape curve, watch, and have the center of the C touch, see that? C shape curve, and we're trying to make it an an oval, but it's that nice C-shape cur curve that touches the edge. Now we're just gonna continue over to the other side and make a backwards C-shape curve. This helps us make an oval almost the same on both sides. We could freehand draw an oval like this, watch. You could just freehand draw an oval but sometimes it's not the same curve on both sides. So there we have that. Now I'm gonna drop down straight. Drop down straight and measure so it's almost, you want it to be as close to the same length because remember when we did our flattened shape, both sides of this rectangle are the same measurement. And that's what a cylinder is, is the same length on both sides here. Now, we're gonna make our same curve. 
we want to make sure because remember we learn about cylinders this circle is the exact same as the bottom circle so I want to try and keep this the same perspective and because we're using a clear container the goldfish is in a clear bowl look at that the reason I'm putting this I can't see through this wood can I so I can't see the curve of this oval. But when it's in a clear container, like in Matisse's, we can see the back side of this. So let's go ahead and do our back side now. And we want it to be equal distance here. So measure with your fingers. Mine's about two fingers. So I want to make sure that my C-shaped curve is about two fingers down here. So I'm gonna continue making my same C-shaped curve. Look, curve, you must touch this line. Curve around, it should be about two fingers. Mine is two fingers. So you measure, if yours is three, then this needs to be three. And then I'm gonna make my back of my C-shaped curve here, and I'm just gonna connect it together. And that is our cylindrical shape for a goldfish bowl. Now, if you want to add a little fancy pedestal, look here, in this Matisse painting, the goldfish bowl is like resting on something. It's up higher. You can even put a little pedestal down at the bottom if you'd like, or you can have it resting on a table. If you want to draw this on a table, we could even put a table line back here. I'm gonna do a partially round table. Now I'm not gonna draw behind my bowl, even though this is see-through and glass right now, because I wanna put my fish in. Look at Matisse's fish. We're gonna put some fish in our goldfish bowl. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw one fish with you, with you, and then you can invent your own items that you're putting in your goldfish bowl. But for uh, kids that want some help in making a simple goldfish, I just start off with an eyeball and I draw a circle around my eyeball. And I put a number one in the front. And I say that's the front of my lips. And then I decide where my tail's gonna end. Make them nice and big. Don't just make little tiny fish. Make it interesting. Look at, Matisse has almost took up the whole goldfish bowl, or at least half. So come on over, decide where your fish tail's gonna end here. And then leave a little space for the actual tail and then go up and around and up and around and then make your tail come out and then you can stick in some detail like fins lips if you want to top fins little tail designs and then you can have fish swimming in different perspectives and views if you want a front view fish do two little eyeballs we'll do partial front view little little opening for a mouth and then I'm just going to kind of connect underneath the chin with the letter U. And then I'm gonna go back in perspective. Say my tail, you wanna go diagonally back now. My tail will end here, connect, and then have a little fish tail back here. And then you can add your top fins on here. And how can I finish off? How about a side fin here? And with your pen, if you have tinier pens, mine's pretty big today, tinier uh, pens you can add a uh, little more detail to your eyes, pens or, or skinny markers. This one's a pretty thick marker today. Now, what you can do with your fishbowl is, look what Matisse did. He added tropical plants around it, but you can decide because you're gonna turn this fishbowl into your art and I want it to be original. Yeah, we can get ideas from Matisse, but where's your fishbowl? Is it gonna be in your room? Is it gonna be in your living room? Is it gonna be sitting out in the patio? Um, I actually had these gorgeous goldfish growing. Um, they were living outside in my yard in a pond. And I had them for about 14 years, can you believe? And actually, they just were eaten by a hawk. So if you want them outside, you can put them outside in a container. Um, but have fun making your Matisse fish bowl. And let's see if I have some examples I can show quickly to some of the kids that are looking on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube? Here's an example right here. And it's fun to fill your fish. 
It's fun to fill your fish with, look at this, she put it on a table. This one's really cool. She put this one on a table. And that's a third grade example, really good cylinder. And it's, it almost looks like a patio table, but then you can decorate and paint it in the way you'd like it. And here's another, um, let me get another example 